dropping a few inches. Cracks appeared and the flooring on the deck started to buckle. And we called a structural engineer who said to immediately put the beams up. They said if we didn't put those beams up, it most likely about 90% chance would have just caved in, taking us with it. Linda is talking about these vertical wooden beams in the middle of the garage that are literally supporting and keeping the second floor from collapsing. Engineers say this support beam over the garage is simply too small and it's now weakening under the pressure of the home. That beam in itself is carrying the whole load to the middle section of the house on the second floor. And if that was to let loose, it would be a catastrophic failure. The vertical beams keeping their home from caving in are only temporary until a permanent solution is found. So Linda and her husband filed a claim with their insurance company, Farmers Insurance. After all, they say their policy specifically states that it covers a collapse. Called the insurance company, figured no problem. I mean, you got a collapse here. They told us it's not a collapse. And that is absurd. It's a collapse. According to Linda, Farmers Insurance told her the house actually has to collapse and fall in before they ever get involved. Until then, their claim keeps getting denied. So Linda reached out to On Your Side. But I'm hoping by calling you guys that maybe we can get something done. Because to be honest with you, you're the first people that have ever listened to us. And for that, I'm very grateful. On Your Side asked Farmers Insurance to look into the issue again. They did and determined the couple's predicament is not covered. If you look at the policy, it clearly states that the collapse must be sudden and an actual and complete falling down. It goes on to say that the substantial impairment of a building structure without a complete falling down is not considered a collapse. So if the second floor had collapsed out of the blue, it likely would have been covered. But since the couple was able to catch it before a total failure, it's not covered now. That's heartbreaking for Linda, whose beloved deck with its views of the superstitions is now too dangerous to use. It's frustrating since it's like one of my favorite places in the world is broken, you know. What? A story. Nicole Kreitz here with uh, Gary Harper from On Your Side in our first alert desk in the newsroom here at AZ Family and just doing kind of a little debrief of this story. Mm. I've never heard of anything like this ever happening before. Beautiful home. Whoa, no kidding. I mean, it's nestled right up against the foothills in Gold Canyon. It's so about a $2 million home okay. uh, built in uh, 2011, sat empty for a couple of years before Linda and her husband bought it in 2016. They bought it for the views. Um, that's what we heard her talking about. She loves the views in the morning. Why she wants to be on the patio. She wants to be on the patio. And then in, De in December, just about five months ago, they discovered a water leak. And they had somebody go up there and discovered it's not draining because their house is basically caving in. The drain, there's a drainage problem. Then they realize there's a bigger problem than just a drainage problem because they figured out exactly what's causing the drainage problem. And that is the beam, the main right. support beam that goes across the garage, mm -hmm. apparently is not big enough. Now, it's unknown if it was the architect's, uh, architect's fault or the builder saving money putting a smaller beam, but the beam is just too small to support that massive house. One thing we didn't talk about in the story there yeah. was in the second floor above that support beam is a stone uh, fireplace. Okay. So we're talking a lot of weight. They also have beautiful cement like Caesar columns. Oh wow. And you can imagine the weight bearing down on that beam and here we are a couple of years later they notice it. It's giving out. That's why they had to put up those support beams. How, how scary is that? Because you yeah. think you, um, you know, a home is the most expensive investment you will ever make in your yeah. lifetime. So you think, okay, th we're going to buy our dream home. It's got the views we want. And they're the original owners. The original owners, yeah. Okay. So nobody knew this problem was even there. Absolutely. And it's interesting because you have to look at, um, trying to go back into the paperwork to figure out what did yeah. the architect call for, for the width and the size and the dimensions of that beam, or was it the builder cutting corners? Right. We still don't have an answer to that. Don't have that answer. Don't mm -hmm. know if we'll ever have that answer. But you know, what about the inspection process? When you build a home, there's a very 
uh, strict. It's rigorous. Uh, yeah, very yeah. rigorous mm -hmm. uh, inspection process when it comes to electrical, um, all everything. And they have to be green tagged before the next process starts. That beam should have been, you would think, red flagged at the beginning right. saying this is not big enough. But why it wasn't? Who knows? And, well, then it, and it went through the building process. Well, riddle me this, because when you went there um, and you were there with the structural engineer who mm -hmm. was kind of, you know, being the expert, showing you what was going on in the garage and everything, mm -hmm. they clearly cut away the drywall so they could see access to that. Beam. Right. So if you had a home inspector come in, maybe that was concealed at the time and they didn't know what's the draw. Yeah, right? but that beam should have been inspected before the drywall Crazy. went up. Oh, you're right. Yeah, because yeah, along the way yes. you have, there are, and that's something that you're familiar with yeah. more so than someone like me, but you deal yeah. with registrar contractors right. all the time. They're out at job sites yes. in the building process, making sure that things are flagged as the process is being built. Well, the, the inspectors are from the municipalities themselves. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you build a house in Phoenix, Phoenix inspectors go out there. If it's in the county, county inspectors go out there. Yeah. Uh, in this case, I don't know what happened to the inspector. If he called in sick that day or they had the drywall up and he just green flagged it anyway. Who knows? It's, it's interesting because I remember in a time um, when the valley was going through like a, a building boom and there were a lot of issues that some homes um, and clearly this is a custom home. This isn't mm -hmm. something that's like a cookie cutter yes. and they're doing you know 20 in, in, in one fell swoop. Right. So it's not like the contractor comes out and the inspector's like okay I'm just going to clear all the roads right. on this property. This would have been a custom home build so you would have kind of presume that an inspector is going to, you know, have a better it, look at things. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a custom home or if it's a cookie mm -hmm. cutter type home. I mean, for safety reasons, they just have to go through a very rigorous uh, inspection process. So you got three variables here. You got the uh, ins inspection that obviously sure, green flagged it, somehow. it uh, somehow fell down on the job. Uh, number two, you got the architect. We don't know if it is his or hers fault, mm -hmm. or if the um, the builder, in this case, the custom home builder was trying to save money with the smaller beam, you know, those beams, the big meaty ones, they can go for like seven to $10,000. The lumber alone the, is very expensive. Well, so the and, and remember, the lumber not long ago, it, uh, lumber was sky high. Sure, that's right. So, that's you right. know, the, the meatier the beam, the more money. That's why maybe that thinner type beam was put in and now you have this problem. I mean, what do you do now? I mean, they can't sell it, and even if they did, you don't want to sell it to somebody else because you don't know if it's going to cave in. Um, the repairs on this alone are going to be around $100,000. So that is the price tag yeah. to get it fixed properly. Yeah. You don't want to cut corners when you're going back and trying to make sure that this is right. It's interesting because when you hear about, um, you know, uneven homes in mm -hmm. the desert, we've heard of homes that shift um, mm -hmm. when the sediment settles and different yeah. things. And I almost thought that was going to be the, the twist of the story yeah. here, but it was interesting to see. I didn't even know that there was such a thing as collapse insurance. Yeah. That is standard. So that's usually in a homeowner's policy. Okay. So, you know, you have fire insurance, flood insurance. Sure. And this is sometimes tucked away in policies. You don't know what's there. Until you um, need it. <laughs> until you need it. But, you know, I think the wording in the policy is very important because it says the collapse of your house has to be very sudden. It has to be accidental. Mm. And it has to just happen at that moment. Now that they discovered that it's, that ca that it's, a, that it's caving in, it's not considered a sudden collapse anymore because now they're bracing it they're keeping it uh, you know intact trying to keep it from um, falling in on itself so tell me I, I know that you said um, farmers was pretty responsive yeah. when you guys reached out to them so now is farmers saying that it's the onus of the homeowner because they know about it so it doesn't matter whose fault it was before now that the homeowners know about it they either have to take action or is it not going to be covered if there's a collapse? It's it's they're going by the letter of the law in this policy. Oh. It has to be a sudden collapse. It's no longer con considered sudden because they know it's there. It's it's happening. Um, I, I guess you know if you're thinking about like this is not a good example for Arizona, but if you have like a lot of um, snow up. on your roof and your house suddenly collapses oh under the gosh. weight of the uh, snow, that should be covered because it's sudden. It's accidental. That's not the case here. So. They're going to be on the hook for at least $100,000 making the repairs. Um, like you said, Farmers Insurance, they were very responsive. And of course, On Your Side appreciates that. They looked, uh, they took uh, two or three different looks at it for us. And um, they said, look, if, if you find a structural engineer with more information, send it our way. We'll take another look at it. But right now, we can't do anything. 
I'm curious also to see like what other insurance policies offer, like what is the fine print and how does that stack up against farmers insurance? Mm -hmm. Like maybe does another provider have a more lenient mm -hmm. um, fine print? And yeah. it's always so hard because yeah. when you're buying a home, it is an emotional yeah. decision, right? right? You're like, this is my dream home, I wanna right. do it. And then you, I, I mean, Sadly, I think of it as like an afterthought. Homeowner's insurance, you know, well, let's no face big it. deal. Nobody really reads all the fine print. I mean, no offense to insurance agents out there, but insurance is boring. I mean, you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to go through every document and look at every clause to see what's covered, what is not covered. Mm -hmm. Look, you buy a house, you're emotionally attached to it because that's why you bought it. You want right. to move in, you're excited, you pick up the phone, you call your uh, agent, and you get insurance. A lot of people don't take the time to read through the policy very carefully. And like you said, it would be interesting to see if other companies have different verbiage or uh, the, you know, wording it differently. Right, right. If they, um, or if or, they even, cover it or if they even cover it, yeah. And, and it's interesting because on one hand, um, just as human nature, you're like, can't they just help this family out? You know, yeah. clearly you buy insurance for a reason. Mm -hmm. This is um, obviously an unexpected expense like that is a crazy expensive expense. It's a business but then decision. It is a business decision, so devil's advocate, if farmers were to cover this, does that then go into the pot that makes insurance more expensive for all of us? Yeah, of course, but that's not gonna happen. Mm. I mean, if they could save themselves, they're insurance companies. I mean, if they can save or keep themselves from paying $100,000, they will, and they have the paperwork to prove that they have the right to do that. But for some reason, if they were to pay for it, yeah, that would go into the big hopper of making insurance uh, more expensive for, for everyone. But it's $100,000. What's next for this couple? What are they going to do? They're weighing their options right now. Mm -hmm. They don't know exactly what to do. They're going to get some more uh, structural engineers out there. Um, they're looking for options to pay for the repairs. In the meantime, you have those six wooden uh, stilts, right. as I call them, holding up that uh, subpar beam. And at least that's there. I mean, at least that. Can you imagine if no. they, if, if let, let's, let's just say, I mean, because the they tiles said, popping out. the tiles I mean, popping yeah. out, um, let's just say they're sleeping three o'clock in the morning oh, and knock you, it, right, knock on wood on, I mean, they found it, which is that's good terrible. because the house could have went down and they could have went down with it. Mm -hmm. Huge problem, right. but they found it, which is good. Okay. So riddle me this, yep. is it a possibility if they go back through because when you file um, through planning and zoning, right? Mm -hmm. You get your paperwork mm -hmm. for a custom home and you file all those blueprints mm -hmm. with the county or the jurisdiction where it's being built. Can they go back and find that original paperwork? And if there's a discrepancy either from what the architect requested to what yeah. the builder put in, could they then, bottom line, they're probably yeah. gonna have to pay out of pocket to fix this, but could yes. they then go back in court and either sue the builder or otherwise. Yes, they could. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. Right? Okay. But I mean, do, do they really want to follow that for that long? I guess they you could. You pay 100 grand and then you're going to pay another exactly. tens of thousands in court. Uh, it could be right? another, exactly. In I years. mean, when, when you're paying or uh, um, suing somebody like that, it could go up to $100,000. Oh, so, um, yeah, it's. I think they're just going to try to fix it on their own and, and let it let it be. But who knows? Oh, it's a it's a word of warning for yeah. everyone to uh, you, we always say check under the hood with cars, yeah. but get an expert to make sure that the home that you're purchasing. I mean, these are really difficult problems to foresee. But this I was behind the drywall, though. This was I mean, behind the drywall. So the other thing, too, they didn't notice until the water leak in December. Mm -hmm. But once they found that out and then they did the rolling of the ball where they like, oh, I always did feel like it was going downhill or yeah. the slope here. Yeah. Did they say like after the fact, oh, maybe I should have noticed ahead of time? Yeah. I, well, if going you, back if you look time, at that floor, you it, it's see. a substantial slope. Okay. Um, and I, you know, we believe it's getting worse and worse and worse. But now since those stilts are there, it, it shouldn't, you know, sink anymore. Okay. But um, yeah, they noticed doors were not closing. Uh. Um, it, tile was cracking and popping up, and that that was the first sign something is not right. You know, something's wrong here. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it then, all added up to that. And then it add, all added up. thousand yeah. dollars. That's why the closet problem. door doesn't open. Yeah, exactly. Dang it. Yep. Gary, what a crazy story. It is. We wish them well, yeah. and hopefully, you know, maybe they can uncover some more details in it. And I know you'll do a follow up if they do. Yeah. But yeah, we're gonna stay on top of it. Um, oh, stories coming up at 5:30 tonight on Channel Three Arizona's Family. We'll be watching it then. Thanks so much.
Thanks for watching Arizona's Family. Watch us live wherever you are, our mobile and streaming news app. You can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, Fire TV, and Android TV. Subscribe on YouTube for live breaking news and video on demand.